Hey, good morning. How are you? I hope you're having a good Saturday. I'm just getting up and in my robe slash blazer here and having my morning coffee. Waking the brain up so that we can write some code. Let's go ahead and check in on our friend Kathy here and see what she's been up to with the ARC funds. I'm at arc-funds.com and we have a listing of actively managed innovation ETFs here like ARCK, ARCG, and this 3D printing ETF. And these are very important ETFs to look at to see what's going on. So uh, she thinks these are the uh, next generation of stocks and will be important trends to follow over the next decade. So you got plenty of time to learn about this stuff. And I was very excited a couple of years ago about uh, this ArcG fund and CRISPR technology. Some good books on the topic. What's it called? Uh, CRISPR book. Crack and Creation, yeah, that's a cool one to check out if you want to learn more about the underlying technology. And there's also a Netflix documentary on uh, genetic editing, gene, ed gene editing. So if you're bored and you just want to watch a movie, you can watch this uh, unnatural selection and learn a little bit more about how people are even hacking their own bodies and, and what's going on here if you want to know more about that story. So just... Even if you're not going to use this to trade, it's very educational just to uh, follow what are the next trends and, and stay on top of them. So that's what I like about investing and trading as well. You're kind of more informed about uh, technologies and things that are going on in the world. And so let's look at one of these ETFs. You can click on any of them and they publish uh, the fund holdings. So if you click on that, you got you a nice CSV file. And I can open it up and see if anything has changed. And look at that. This is for a Jan January 29th, uh, 2021. And yeah, this is a great place to see uh, what they're adding to. And so we're talking about companies like Teladoc Health, Twist Bioscience, Regeneron, uh, CRISPR Therapeutics. Um, these are companies that you may or may know, not know very much about, but they're companies to keep an eye on. And so now, as we know, we're programmers, we have this CSV file. Um, we might want to manipulate this data or analyze it or do something with it. And so let's go ahead and parse some of this data out and load it into our Postgres database and write some queries against it. Against it. Let's think about things we can do with it here. And then later we'll attach price data to it uh, and do some analysis there. So, uh, but the first thing we gotta do is get a snapshot of these and I'm gonna do that now. So I downloaded that one. Uh, for ArcG, but I can also go to any of the other funds. So I'll go to ArcW, Next Generation Internet, includes companies like Tesla, Roku, uh, even the Bitcoin Trust is in there, Tencent, Spotify. A lot of these are very big companies already, but you see companies like Fastly were not very big companies uh, a couple of years ago, and now they are growing like crazy. So a lot of good stocks here to keep an eye on. And so we can download that, that one, right? and I'll download that up, okay? And fortunately, so that you don't have to watch me download and rename all these, there's not that many of them, so it doesn't take very long, but I've already downloaded a couple of these and I'm going to grab them from a folder I have here and give me one second, uh, data, okay? And I downloaded these a few days ago and what I'm gonna do here is copy them into this project directory that we have. Okay, and I'll publish these in GitHub and link down below. So I have this data directory. Okay, so I just paste it in on my second monitor. And look at that. What I've done here in the data directory is, uh, these are old snapshots from a few days ago, from like Tuesday night or so. So we have uh, January 25th and we have January 26th. And what I did for each of these is I downloaded each one and just put the, in all caps, I did the name of the ETF symbol, like arcf.csv, arcgcsv, and so forth, so that we have a naming convention. And that'll make it easier for us to crawl through this directory and pull in the data. And since we're automating a lot of tasks, it's very helpful to have a good naming convention because when you download them out of the box, you get this name like arc next generation internet ETF, blah, blah, blah. And if you download them repeatedly, your desktop will add extra uh, information to it. So uh, what I did to get started is manually downloaded a couple of them, and then we can automatically set up a job to uh, request these periodically if we want 
to automatically load them into our database. So what I do, what I have here is what the ArcG fund looked like uh, January 25th. And then I have a date uh, naming convention for a folder here. And then I have, you know, what, what each of these funds, the contents of each of those CSV files for the next day. And what we can do is programmatically uh, schedule a job to uh, create these directories and keep fetching these CSVs over time. And then we can programmatically track them, right? And so now that we have these, right, it's just plain data. Look at the structure. We got a date. We got a fund. We have the name of the company, the symbol. And then we have the number of shares, the market value, and the weight. And so we'll as our first example of time series data, even though these are just dates, you know, we're tracking these weights and uh, shares over time and to track, track changes, which I thought would be kind of interesting, okay? And so I got these CSV files in the directory now, and let's just create a quick uh, CSV parser. Uh, we've done this on the channel a number of times, and I'll just explain it once again as I go. So I'm just gonna make another script called populate etfs.py. And from earlier, I can log back into my database. And if I look, uh, my container is not running right now. So I can do this and I'll just do docker start timescale db, get that up and running again. And I should be able to execute some commands on that or I can use uh, my table plus here. And so I'll keep trying to do that. Um, I'm switching between command line and learning more about this particular GUI interface uh, as I go along in this series. There's PG admin, just to mention, you know, this isn't the only one. Uh, there's PG admin four, which is like a web-based interface to Postgres that you might be interested in. And uh, there's uh, IntelliJ integration. Uh, so they have, what is their data? Data grip is another one that's built into an IDE. And there's also uh, Windows has one, there's DB schema. There's a bunch of tools for browsing databases if you want to use a GUI tool. I heard a lot about this one, so I wanted to learn how to use it. And so I'm just doing this as I go. So I'll open, so I'll open my ETF database, okay? And you see we have our functions and we have our tables. We already have our stocks because we populated those in the last video. And what we want to do is populate this ETF holding table, right? And so you see in the CSV files, right? We go in here, you see ArcG. We have the symbol for the actual ETF, and we have the symbol for the stock that is a member of that ETF, right? So what we can do here is as we're iterating over the rows in the CSV file, we come across a stock ETF symbol and a stock symbol like ArcG and Teladoc. I, I write an SQL query as I'm on that row. I find the stock ID for a Teladoc and I find the stock ID for uh, RG. And then I insert those pairs in ETF ID and holding ID. And we have this uh, relationship uh, built in. And not only that, uh, we store whatever day we're currently parsing it for. So as I'm going through uh, each day in uh, this directory structure, I just insert a date there. And then I also insert the uh, shares and the weight because we have these metrics defined. That's what we're trying to track over time. And then we can once we do that, then we can start writing queries that look how these uh, shares and weights have changed over time. So let's go ahead and write the um, Python script to populate this ETF holding table. So what I've done here is started a new script, populate etfs.py, and it's empty, and we need to connect to our database. We can either modularize our database connection or just, for now, just copy paste. This isn't too critical. Uh, we'll copy paste from this to save time. and. We already have a script to connect to our database just like this. And then we have a database connection that accesses you know, our config and it has our API key, which is temporary and I'm deleting. And so don't mess with it. And also this has uh, my database host and uh, username and so forth. So configure database and your keys however you want and start going. So you got a connection and then also uh, what else do we need? And I'll go ahead and copy this line for the dictionary cursor as well. Okay, got that going. And let's see, just to check real quick, I'll just do a quick cursor, uh, execute select star from stock, make sure we're good to go. Uh, so I'll do that. And then I'll just do rows equals cursor dot fetch all, make sure everything's up and running from last night. So I run this, there you go. I got a big dump of data. So it looks like everything's working. We have a connection to our database. And next, what we need to do is uh, open these CSV files. So I can just import CSV 
and just use Python's built-in uh, CSV reader, and that will help us there. So the way I'll approach this for now, there's a number of ways you could approach it, is um, I have the names of all, t all the ETFs, and since there's only seven, seven of them, and we have this column called uh, is ETF uh, that we didn't bother populating yet, I'm just gonna mark all of these as ETFs, right? So what I'll do here now is go ahead and just update the ARC ETFs in the stock table. So I'm gonna do update uh, stock, uh, set is ETF equals true, where, let's do where down here, where uh, symbol in, and I'll just list these. So we got ARC K, we got ARC Q, we got uh, print, we got the Israel one, and then we got ARC G, ARC F, and ARC W, W. And let me double check on that. We got ARC yeah, ARC F is FinTech Innovation, and so that has your Square, you got your Zillow, uh, Mercado Libre, and so forth, uh, PayPal, that kind of thing. So that's good, and then we're going to run that. If I do that, you'll see it says seven rows were affected, and then I can go back to my uh, stock table, and let's say I run a query now, and I just select star from stock, where is ETF equals true, and I run that, and you see I have all the ETFs in the database. So if we want to build an entire a huge uh, ETF database. We can automate this as we're populating our stocks and just set all the is ETFs from a different data source. Uh, but in this case, Alpaca doesn't give is ETF like this. So, but we're just dealing with seven ETFs that we want to track here. So I just set them with the regular uh, SQL query and demonstrated an update in command, which if you don't know, might be useful to you. Okay. So uh, there we go. We got that. And so now, since we have this script already. Oh, uh, that's connecting, select star from stock. I'll just do where is ETF equals true, right? And now if I just fetch those, uh, you should just see the ARC funds. So I'll run that. And there you go, we got those rows. And so I can just loop through those for row in rows, right? And then we'll just call this ETFs. ETFs equals cursor, cursor fetch all. For ETF and ETFs, uh, print ETF, right? So as I loop through those, in, right, we have a way to iterate over those and you kind of see how we have the symbol now and then we can map to uh, these CSV files. So if I do print ETF a symbol like that, we have just the symbol and then we can easily create a handle uh, to the file. So if I do with open, okay, uh, data slash, and then we have these dates here, right? So I need to open up a specific date. So first I'll just hard code one in. So I'll do 0125 slash, and then we can do an F string here. So I'll do an F string and then I'll do uh, that. And then I'll do uh, ETF symbol right inside. ETF symbol dot CSV. And so you see our naming convention is uh, helping us out here. And then I can choose to as F or as file or whatever you want to call it. And I'll do reader equal, equals CSV dot reader uh, F and then now I can just print. All right, I think I can just do if for row in reader, uh, print row and see how that goes about. Uh, let's see, let's run that, test it out, and look at that. We so we have cool. You see how it it opened it, and then we have all these rows, and so we're going through the C CSV file. So we have uh, arc F, right? So as it opens the arc F file, it goes through it row by row. So we have the headers. And then we have, you know, square, 10 cents, so forth in a Python data structure uh, rather than just a, a CSV structure. And then we can start uh, working with this. And I don't need these headers. So what we can do is after we open it, we can write next uh, reader. Let's see, I think that works. And then we'll just skip that very first line. So I did next reader. And then now we have just the uh, data here, right? Uh, so that's good to go. So one thing you'll notice here though, is at the bottom, there's like these extra blank lines and then they put some extra text in here. So if I open up one of these in numbers, for instance, or Excel, then if you scroll to the bottom, there's this extra crap at the bottom right here that's kind of interfering with things. So you want to clean your data up a little bit usually. And so how can we do that? So we have a number of fields. Let's just make sure that uh, they're all filled in and there's at least a symbol here. Otherwise we can't really use the data. So let's go ahead and make some local variables here to just uh, get the data we need. So I mainly need this uh, stock symbol 
over here. So like Shopify, I need that SHOP. So that's zero, one, two, the third item in the list here. So I just do uh, ticker equals row three. Okay. And then I think if we just have a ticker, um, that will be good enough to filter this down. So if ticker uh, print row, and that'll just print the ones that actually have a ticker. Yeah, so you see that's a lot uh, cleaner there, right? We have just uh, the ticker symbols and that should be good. So we filter those out and now we just need to insert those records into the database, okay? So to do this, what we'll do is do cursor.execute and let's do a quick lookup, okay? And I use these triple quotes so I can go across multiple lines. So we need to select some data from the database. And so we'll select star from stock where symbol equals, and then we'll put our little placeholder percent %s, and then we need to give it a tuple. And then so we'll select from stock, and this is so we can look up and find the actual stock ID in our database and create those relationships in our database, okay? And then once we do that, uh, we have this lookup and we can do a stock equals cursor.fetch1. So I'm fetching the record in our database. And then uh, if we find it, so I'll do if stock, then what we wanna do is insert. So we'll insert. So I'll do insert into uh, ETF holding. And we have a, a date time field. So what does this look like? Uh, ETF ID holding ID. So ETF ID holding ID. We have a date field and we have shares and weight. Okay, and then we need to insert values into those. So I'll do like that. So I'll put these placeholders and then we need to give it actual values. And if you use like some object relational mapper or function calls to make this easier, feel free to do this. I'm focusing on raw SQL uh, in this tutorial as well because the timescale functions, you know, we wanna look at the low level functions they provide and not just use like a tool that abstracts all of this away. We need to uh, learn what's going on under the hood here to understand it better, okay? And so we're gonna do a date and then how are we gonna get the date? Um, I shouldn't have hard coded this here. What we wanna do is loop through for each date in here, right? And so to make this, uh, to go a little further, we could say uh, uh, dates equals, and let's just hard code a list up here, right? So I'll do a list here. And then since we have these, I'll do like that. Um, and then we can automate this in the future so that we're not like hard coding the state list. But I had two, for example, and I'm gonna put those in there and then I'll do uh, for current date in dates and then we'll indent out a bit. So we're opening up, we're looking at each directory here, then we're looking through uh, each uh, symbol where it is ETF is true. Uh, we're processing that symbol, so I'll just keep printing it out. And then I'm gonna open the CSV file in each of those date folders skipping the header, going through each row in reader, uh, getting the symbol, uh, looking it up, um, and we'll go ahead and map uh, these other fields we need, which are shares and weight. So I'll say uh, shares equals row five and weight equals row uh, seven, right? So uh, if I look at my CSV, you know, we uh, we got three, five, and seven. So we're, we're taking those values here. And if you want to store another value, you can as well. Uh, so these are the ones that I want to store. Then we're doing a lookup. We're finding the stock ID in the database uh, because we need it. And if that symbol is in our database, then we're going to insert it into ETF holding. And we need to provide these placeholders. What values do we need? Uh, the ETF ID, what is that? Well, we selected from stock where is ETF is true. We already have a reference to uh, the ETF in this loop. So we have the symbol, but we can also use the ETF's ID. So I'll do ETF ID here as the first, and then I'll do a stock ID because we have a reference to that row here. And then we can do our date, which is the current date we're on. So I got my current date. So I use that. And then I created these variables for shares and weight for each row in the CSV, shares and weight. Okay, and if I do that, let's see where we get. And then I'm gonna commit this. So I'm gonna do com connection, commit. I'll clear that out and run it and see what went wrong. So I run that. First of all, it says there's no such file directory data slash arcq. So I left out something there. So I'm gonna go up here. And even though I defined these dates, I didn't use this in my F string. So I didn't wanna hard code that. 
So now I'm putting current date in there. So it'll have January 25th will go in there. January 26th will go in there. And then we have one loop through for each symbol. So I run that. List index out of range. And so check this out. So what went wrong? Weight equals row seven. Uh, list index out of range. Okay. So what happened? What row was it trying to process? There must be something wrong with our data handling. So I'm going to do a try around this just to see what the error was. And I'll do exception as, uh, I'll do exception as E and let's just print out whatever, what some details. Actually, when there's an exception thrown, what we'll do is print out the row and let's see what the problem was. Okay. Accept exception as E. Right. Print that out. So you see, I still have this garbage row in there because there's like a blank defined there. And so what I'll do is uh, just say if there's a ticker, then then we'll look at these other uh, columns. So if ticker, so if ticker here, we'll check if there's a ticker symbol and it's not blank, right? So we can do we can do this, or we can check if all those exist, or if we can check if there's no exceptions. You can handle that error in a number of ways. So if I do if ticker, then try to access this other stuff. Uh, let's try it now. So I do that. And let me see if my database got any records in it. Let's check on this. So select star from select star from ETF holding. Run that. Okay, no records in there yet. Good. I want to make sure we're starting clean. And I'm going to run that. And you see I have a no such file or directory. And that's because oh, I typed the date wrong there. So that's good. Check, make sure we're still good. Okay, nothing's been inserted yet, so uh, got the right dates now, so that's good. And now I'm going to run it one more time, and you see how it's processing through all those in order. And it looks like it finished, so let's see what went down. So if I select star from ETF, ETF holding now, and I run it, and look at that. And so now we have all these database and rows in here showing our ETF IDs and holdings. We have the shares and weight for each day. I can write queries to just start figuring out uh, what things look like. So let's just write some SQL queries real quick, just for some simple examples. I can, if I want to see the ETF holding records uh, where uh, DT equals a certain date, I can just filter down to 0126 like that. And this will just show me the records where the date time is January 26. If I just want to focus on one uh, particular ETF, right? So I'll comment this out with two dashes. And then I want to select star from uh, stock where uh, ID equals this 7315. Okay, so I'm going to run that. So this is our Q, right? And so if I want to select star from ETF holding where uh, ETF ID equals 7315. Comment that out. So I just want to see the holdings uh, where ETF is 7315. I can do that. So that's all of the holdings of RQ, right, across multiple dates. And then I can also uh, select star from ETF holding where ETF ID equals 2021 0126, or where ETF ID equals 7315 and DT equals the 26th, and I can compare that to what it looked like on the 25th, right? So I run that, and that combines both of those into one. Oh, I'm at 7315. Okay, so I run that. All right, so I see these holdings here, right? And then I can see what they looked like on the 26th. So I can do those individually, right? So now let's ask some questions about this data. Like what are some new holdings that weren't there the 25th and are now there as of the 26th? So we can get a little fancier with our SQL and keep doing this over time. So what I can do is do a select holding ID uh, from, from, from ETF holding where uh, DT equals 2021-01-26 and uh, holding ID not in select distinct uh, holding ID from ETF holding where DT equals 2021-01-25, right? And let me see if I can get that right. And 
holding ID, not in select distinct holding from ETF holding where, do, yeah. So uh, you see how I'm using a subquery here. There's many ways to write these queries. Uh, this is just one way. And so let me just show you the distinct on its own. And I'm doing like a nested query there. And so if I wanna just select the distinct holding IDs from ETF holding where the date time is January 25th, I do that. This just gets me a list of the holding IDs if I just want those, right? But then I use this as a subquery, right? So I'm gonna get uh, the holdings from ETF holding where the date time is today, if today was January 26th, and then compare those to uh, what was in there on the 25th. So we're finding the ones that are in uh, January 26th, but not in January 25th. So I put that subquery there, run that, and I have a syntax error. And I think that's just an extra parentheses. And I'll run that. There you go, holding ID is 15117. So there's a new stock in here. Let's figure out what it is. Maybe it's interesting. And let's speculate as to why it's in there, right? So I'll comment that out. And what is, and we could join this to get the stock name automatically. Uh, but I like the mystery here that we query for it ourselves. So I'm gonna select star from stock where ID equals 15117. And what, can anyone guess what, what stock was added on the 25th or 26th? Run that. Twitter, oh geez. If you watch the full stack uh, tutorial, you know that I stopped trading Twitter because I've had such high expectations for it like a couple of years ago. This is one I thought was gonna be a great, uh, a great one. Uh, it was in the 30s, low 30s. And I thought, oh, Twitter's going to 100. Everyone uses this thing too much. You know, there's important people all over it has valuable data, every social media company has been skyrocketing, got Pinterest, Snap, Facebook, all of them doing very well. But then Twitter has always kind of lagged. And then, I don't know, I just wondered why that was. And I guess it's a management issue or they're not monetizing the same way. And so Kathy Wood, ARK Funds, they decided there's some value here in Twitter all of a sudden as of just last week. So that's very interesting, right? Uh, and we can speculate, why would that be? You know, uh, there was a dip in Twitter stock about, yeah, Trump left the platform. He got banned, right, after the Capitol thing. And Twitter tanked like 20% or so. So everyone dumped. And it looks like Kathy here uh, stepped in and said, you know what, maybe maybe we don't need Donald Trump. You notice what happened with GameStop? Are people not talking on Twitter anymore? Does anyone give a shit about Trump anymore? No, they don't. Uh, they're just gonna move on to talk about the next thing. And so everyone's talking about GameStop. We had the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Twitter is still a valuable place for news as it unfolds. And that's been my thesis. And But I haven't made a lot of money on Twitter stock, really. Uh, you know, made, might have made a 10% gain or something, but it never became the $100 stock that I thought it would be, but I don't know, maybe maybe it will be, maybe it'll grow into that. I noticed they recently acquired a review, right? So making Twitter a better home for writers and content creators. And so it looks like they're getting in on the uh, Substack game. Uh, so Substack, a lot of people, if you go to Twitter, there's a lot of people running their own little newsletters, right? And building an audience there. And it looks like Twitter's getting in on that. And so if their business model, you know, there's this huge creator economy, uh, you know, I'm making YouTube videos here and trying to build a following, have a website, have a course, have a blog. Uh, it looks like Twitter's trying to enter in that game. And yeah, that seems like a great place for it because people have their following on Twitter and have discussions. And so if they can make add-ons that make the platform valuable in other ways, more than just, uh, you know, people arguing and talking shit to each other, then maybe, yeah, maybe maybe there's something here. They can have some premium service or something. So that's kind of cool. So maybe maybe that's what's seen, or maybe it's just that it dumped 20% and now it's considered uh, undervalued at this point. So you look on the 25th right here, right? So I'm gonna look at the 25th and then Twitter wasn't in there. Then the 26th, Kathy and Ark must've just added this and look at that. So it was $47 a share and then spike to uh, $50 a share, right? And so if you look on the 25th, you know, that's like a 10% gain here uh, on the 28th. And it's still, you know, it's still holding up all right. So um, even with that sell -off, big sell off on Friday, um, you know, it started out pretty good. So 45 to $53 a share right there. And then everyone's anxious about GameStop and Robinhood and liquidity and, you know, there's a big sell off there. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Twitter, for some reason, 
put it on your radar. Maybe maybe it'll let's see what, let's see if there's any uh, value here. Uh, let's see how Twitter evolves over the next uh, couple of years as a platform. So that's kind of cool. We looked at a holding there and saw one that's present today that wasn't there yesterday, if today was the 26th. And so now what's another interesting question I can ask? Maybe I just want to compare and see how the holdings have changed, the existing holdings, right? Uh, so maybe they didn't drop one or add one. Maybe we just uh, they just decreased their weight uh, in the portfolio. And so we can look at that as well. And I'm just going to show a simple way of doing this now. As we get into more and more complex analy analytics functions and SQL, I'll show you more sophisticated ways of just filtering down to the exact data you need. But just the simplest thing we can do here is do select star uh, from ETF holding. So I can do select star from ETF holding. Um, and I can just do an ordering so I and just start it just eyeball it here. So I'll do order by ETF ID. So what I can do is order all of the holdings by ETF ID. So I have 6834, 6834, 6899, 6899, right? You see how we're ordering on the holding ID. And then we can add additional ordering fields here. So I can order by the holding ID, get those all lined up, right? So we have the holding ID, uh, we have the ETF ID and we have the holding ID. So those columns are now sorted, and then we can sort by the date as well. So if I order by all of these, right, you'll see, uh, you can just look at them next to each other. So you see ETF ID 7312, holding ID 6834. Uh, that's how it looked the 25th. That's how it looks the 26th. And you can see uh, the weight has increased here and the number of shares, right? And you can write more and more queries to see which one did they increase weight by the most, which one's decreased. So we can just take one of these. So if I scroll around, you see what what stands out. So that one looks like about a half percentage change there. So let's see which one that is. So this is uh, ETF ID 73117. So we can select from ETF or from stock where, st where ID equals uh, 7317. So if I do that, and then I'll comment this guy out. So we'll select that to see what the ETF ID is. Uh, so we're stock where ID equals, or again, let's just do an in real quick. We'll just get both of them at once. So we'll 7317, and then we got uh, 13774, 13774, right? And so ARCW uh, for Roku here. So Roku, there is a change there. And so if we look at Roku, uh, you can see on the Roku stock, um, the holdings decreased there from the 25th to the 26th. So you'll look at the 25th here. Um, she started reducing exposure. And yeah, it looks like uh, Roku at the moment is on the way down. And it could be, you know, a lot of times this isn't just a bad sign for the stock. It could be it just ran up too much and it became too high of a weighting in the portfolio. So you see uh, Roku has been in this fund and, you know, it started out at 27. You know, it's been over a thousand percent gain there. So maybe she's like, oh, this is taking up too large of a percentage of this particular ETF. I need to reduce uh, my my exposure to it and rebalance a little bit. So um, yeah, it's still part of the ETF, but you know, that's a pretty nice, almost parabolic run there. So it might, might make sense to take some gains. And yeah, it looks like, I don't know, who knows what'll happen there. So monitor Roku, let's see what happens there uh, following that. So. Um, yeah, that's pretty good for this video. We covered uh, some SQL, we parsed some CSVs, we downloaded, uh, loaded them up, and you kind of see how the data is changing over time. And you can ask yourself questions and speculate on why this data is changing over time. Make up your own story. And we can automate this further and further and schedule a job to automatically create these folders, run and get the CSVs. And if you watch the full stack tutorial, I spent, a, I don't wanna, redo all of this, but if you uh, spend time on the full stack tutorial, I talked about cron jobs and scheduling them a lot. So you can set up a little script here to automatically do this CSV parsing and do that. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna spend time on that just cause I, I talked about cron jobs too long on the last uh, series, but you should get the idea if you watch uh, those videos and be able to put that together. And so uh, thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos, I'm going to start working with price data, which will result in more interesting 
uh, analytics functions than just looking at these dates manually. But we've laid the foundation for a lot of basic SQL, uh, basic knowledge of databases to kind of get us all uh, on the same page. And then we can go deeper into time scale uh, DB functions, right? Because um, I mean, if you've used Postgres a long time, you know, a lot of this is already built into Postgres. So you didn't really need the time scale extension for what I just showed you. But I wanted to lay the groundwork for doing more advanced things that you might want time scale DB for. So uh, thanks for watching this and stay tuned for many videos to follow. Thanks.